Hi, this is Tom Harper with Avidyne. In this video, we're going to talk about changing flight plans on the IFD 550. This also applies to the other IFDs in the family, the 540, the 440, etc. So let's jump right in here. In this case, let's, uh, we've got a scenario here. We're, we're referencing the book Flying with the Avidyne IFD by Michael F. Bauer. I encourage you to check it out. It's got some nice scenario-based training that we're kind of using as a guideline here. In this case, there's a scenario where we're sitting at the St. Paul downtown airport and we're preparing for a trip to Chicago Midway. You receive the following clearance from Minneapolis Clearance Delivery. Cessna 1234, you are cleared from the St. Paul downtown airport to the Chicago Midway airport via the Press intersection to Nodine, to Lone Rock, to Madison, to Northbrook, climb and maintain 5000, squawk 1234. So let's enter that flight plan and then we'll do some uh, editing, etc. So we're sitting on the ground at St. Paul downtown airport as it shows here. We're going to go to the press intersection. So again, I like to use this FMS knob. There's a bunch of ways to do it. You can either touch the screen and ring up the waypoint menu, or you can touch the knob. And now we want to go to press P R E and it nominates the rest press. And from there, we're cleared to the no Dean V O R O D I. So we push the button, we get a menu. Select it again, and we're going to go to O, D, I. It nominates the rest. And now we're cleared from there to the Lone Rock VOR, Lima, November, Romeo. So that, Lima, November, and there's Romeo entered. Next up is Northbrook VOR. It's O, B, K. There it is. And finally, we're going to go to Midway, which is K M D W. K M D W. Geofill fills it in for us. And there's our flight plan. So if we activate that flight plan, now we're flying along. Again, here's our origin airport is in blue. Our active waypoint is in magenta. Our downstream waypoints are in gray. And our destination is in blue. Notice I've scrolled the flight plan off the page. So now I'm viewing this much of the flight plan, but the flight plan's that long. And my active waypoint is up there off the screen. That's what that little scroll bar shows. You see there now the active waypoint's kind of right in the middle of the page. It makes it really handy to kind of, from an orientation point of view, to see what you're looking at. So one of the ways you can check your flight plan is we come over here and notice our side tab. It says map. Again, I can touch it. And now I can see the flight plan and the map at the same time. And again, that's the side tab. It says map, but when you hit it again, it says to take me back to flight plan. I can also click and hold this button if I want to use buttons instead of touch. And it'll, if I click and hold it, it'll bring it back to flight plan. If I click and hold it, it will take me to the map, split screen. Now I'm going to take this line select key that says expanded. And if I hit it, it'll take me to what's called view cursor. And now, It'll, it's going to center, out, center the map around whichever waypoint I've got highlighted. So as I scroll through the list, I can review my entire flight plan. See how it says cursor centered? I can scroll through the flight plan and view all of my waypoints and say, yeah, that looks good. It's a nice way to kind of skip through and make sure you've got what you're expecting and what you entered. So now let's say we want to go direct to a waypoint that's already in our flight plan. In this example, the scenario is we're cruising along and all of a sudden ATC says Cessna 1234, you're cleared direct to Madison. Well, if we scroll down, Madison is in our flight plan right here. I can just touch the waypoint or again, I can just use my knob and scroll down this outer knob, touch that waypoint, hit the direct to and it'll nominate it. And now I hit enter. And then it says to activate, go direct, now there. Now we've skipped all this part of the flight plan and we're going direct Madison and then we'll reconnect into Northbrook, et cetera. So what if we want to go direct to a waypoint that's not in our flight plan? In this case, we get a call from ATC that says Cessna 1234, previous traffic reports, convective activity building between you and Madison. Turn left 20 degrees and proceed direct to the Volk VOR when able. So now what we want to do is we want to go direct to Volk VOK VOR and it's not in the flight plan so we can just hit direct to and instead of Madison we just touch the button or touch the field and now we can type in Volk and of course it's going to nominate it because it knows it's nearby and hit enter and activate. Now we're going direct to the Volk VOR 
and kind of ignoring our flight plan. So it's pretty easy to enter a waypoint or go direct to a waypoint that's not in the flight plan. So now we're going direct to the Volk VOR. Now you'll notice we have a gap in our flight plan because we haven't given the FMS instruction on how to get us back on track once we get to Volk. Let's uh, assume for a minute, you know, we, we acknowledge there's this gap and we wanna, we wanna solve that. So let's call ATC and we'll say, Senator Cessna 1234 requests direct Madison after Volk. ATC replies Cessna 1234 after Volk, clear direct Madison. So, okay, now all we have to do is close that gap. A couple ways we can do that. We can either scroll down over it and hit the clear button. Or if you notice when we highlight it, it'll tell us we can connect Volk with Madison. So we'll just do that. And now they're connected and we'll just fly right back on track to Madison as, as we were gonna go. So what if we wanna add a waypoint into our existing flight plan? How would we do that? Here's a scenario where we get a instruction from ATC, Cessna 1234, Chicago approach will not accept you on your current routing. After Madison, you're clear direct Janesville, direct Northbrook as filed. So after Madison, we need to go to the Janesville VOR instead. So we need to add a waypoint to our flight plan. So between Madison and Northbrook, notice this is an edit cursor, this is an insert cursor. So it's between the two waypoints. We always know if we're gonna enter a waypoint, if it's where it's gonna land, unlike the old legacy systems where you highlight over a waypoint, you didn't know if it, the waypoint was gonna go on after it or before it. We make it nice and simple with the insert cursor. So what do we do next? We push the FMS button, that's gonna give us our menu. And it tells us all the things we can do at that point in the flight plan. We can enter a waypoint, we can hold it Madison, either a standard hold or an orbit, or there's a bunch of airways that connect. We're not gonna do any of that. We're simply gonna enter Janesville by pushing the button again. We're gonna enter a waypoint and it's JVL. And it, now I type the J and it gives me JVL because of geofill. And now we've added a waypoint to our flight plan and we're just gonna continue trucking along. So now let's talk about how we delete a waypoint. So now let's see what happens if ATC calls and says Cessna 1234, Chicago approach changed their mind. After Madison, you're cleared direct Northbrook as filed. What we want to do is we want to eliminate uh, Janesville. So we highlight over it. And again, we can hit either clear or as it says right here in the, what we call the butler, we can delete the waypoint. So let's just do that. And now we've deleted the waypoint, it's simple. So let's try another trick, uh, editing flight plans. Let's change our destination airport. Instead of going to Midway, uh, in this case, uh, what happens? ATC calls and says Cessna 1234, Chicago approach reports heavy thunderstorms at Midway Airport. No traffic is currently getting in. Expect extensive holding until the airport reopens. You reply back to ATC, Cessna 1234 re requests diversion to the Janesville Airport. We'll wait it out on the ground. So now what we're going to do is we want to put in Janesville Airport as our destination. So let's scroll down past Midway get our insert cursor, push the FMS button. I want to enter a waypoint. Again, I want to enter Janesville. So I type K J V L Janesville. Now we've added Janesville as our airport of record. We're cleared direct to Janesville. So we'll just highlight it, hit direct to enter and go. So now we're cleared to Janesville where we'll sit and wait it out until the weather gets better. So you can see with the IFD 550, or any of the IFDs for that matter. It's very easy to enter a flight plan. It's very easy to edit a flight plan, to go direct to a waypoint within the flight plan, direct to a waypoint not in the flight plan, and to add and delete flight plans, and in this case, edit or change your destination. So it's very easy to use the IFD 550. There's a lot of more powerful features that it has that we'll be showing you in future videos. So hope you come back, thanks.